Hi, welcome to Actual Spinster. My name is Anna Marie and today I'm just going to show you a summer TBR. I think I'll make another video where I kind of update you about the progress and the sort of um, my success or not with my recent spring TBR. With this summer one, I guess because I'm making it a bit earlier in the season of summer, like I'll have a bit more time to complete it because I made my spring one in April as opposed to in March. Um, and I consider March, April and May to be spring. And then like, yeah, June, July and August to be summer. So I've got summer, like I've got more time in summer. Yeah, um, so the same rules kind of apply in terms of like, I'm only letting myself show you eight books and we will, uh, yeah, go from here. <laughs> There's nothing that is specifically here that I'm like purposefully reading for like a readathon, um, but they might be, you know, crossovers. I just haven't like looked into it and I don't have any specific plans to join a readathon at the moment, but I might change my mind. Also, sorry if I'm even more inarticulate than normal. I'm, I'm like hoping that I'm at the tail end of a pain flare up, but yeah. Um, okay, so there's this book, which I need to get to because um, my friend lent it to me and this is Mad Sisters of Essie um, by Tasha and Meta. And yeah, I mean, it's got this gorgeous cover. I suddenly realized like I'm not actually even sure if I know what it's about, but um, ooh, it, it just sounds like super me. I'm gonna read you the first like lines of the description, but I'll need that. <laughs> so Mayang and Lale are keepers of the whale of Babel, Babel. They roam within its cosmic chambers, speak folk tales of themselves, and pray to an enigmatic figure they know only as Great Wissar. To Lale, this is everything. For Mayang, it is not enough. So yeah. I think there might be like a whale theme. Why was I thinking that? Oh yeah, okay, I'll show you the next book too. The next book I'd like to read this summer is The Whale Rider by Witi Ihimera. And yeah, we got two whales. Um... <laughs> This is a novel by a Maori uh, author and um, yeah, it's been on my TV for ages. It's from like the 1980s. I think it's, um, I think it is like more of a YA or kids-ish book than um, an adult one, um, but like before kind of YA was a category, um, like a publishing category or a generic one. It says on the back, this timeless story tells how the courage of one girl in standing against the tide of tradition enables her tribe to become reconnected with their ancestral life force. Just very beautiful sounding. Let's see. Okay, well I wanted to pick a translated from Yiddish book for me to read, so I decided to pick this one. I, I'm kind of feeling like maybe it, it's gonna be a bit too like of a wintry vibe, just from like where it's sat and stuff, like I don't know, cold Eastern European um, Yiddish life, but like um, we'll have a go. Um, this is uh, Dine uh, by Ida Mays, or Ida Mays it's, it's like an autobiographical novel that's what they, they call it on the top but I, I you know I think it's okay to call it a novel um but it's obviously about um Ida Mays's life and yeah it's just like a buildings woman from the perspective of Dine it's set in Belarus what, well, what is now Belarus I guess wasn't then and yeah kind of spans the late 19th century and the early 20th century I think yeah, and I, I hope I really enjoy it oh it's translated from the Yiddish by Yami Yahu Aron Taub so there's that. I actually have two books by an author, which I guess I, I didn't like, that's not against the rules that I like sort of set for myself, but I guess I did imagine not doing this, but I, I really would like to read both of these and I do feel like they're both kind of like summer plans. So I'm gonna talk about them here. So there's uh, Happiness as Such by Natalia Ginsberg, uh, which is translated by Minna Zalman Proctor. And this, yeah, I just, um, it's one of her later novels. And it's set in 1970s Rome um, about uh, Michele, Michele? It's gonna be like familial. It's gonna be Ginsbergian. Is that is that a word? <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm kind of just interested to see because I do feel like, to some degree, I'm not, maybe not entirely sure, but like I have enjoyed more of her novels as they've got like time onwards, and this is f from later, so maybe I'll like it the most. Who knows? Um, I also have this other book, which is from the fifties, um, and this is All Our Yesterdays, um, also by Natalia Ginsberg, obviously. This one is translated by Angus Davidson, um, and this one is a big one, but I, I, I just, there's something about this that seems like a summer book for me. I, I don't really know why. It's about Anna, a 16 year old schoolgirl in a small town in northern Italy who finds herself pregnant after a brief romance. There is also another Natalia Ginsberg book that I'd like to read kind of soon, so during the summer, which is a different translation of a one that I've already read, which is also the reason I mention it is because it's also about a young girl who gets pregnant. <laughs> Suddenly I'm like, is that actually what happens or is it slightly different? I suppose it's not really, it's it's not really quite like that, but it's like kind of like that. Yeah, it's called The Road to the City. And yeah, so I read one translation and then a new translation came out this year 
which I wanted to read too um, because I was interested in, uh, I read like an article, anyway whatever, that's not on this list but it kind of is, but don't tell anyone. <laughs> okay the next book is You Must Believe in Spring by Mohamed Tonzi. Um, this is like a lovely book published by Hajar Press which is a great um, interesting like independent radical people of colour led uh, political publishing house and they publish fiction and non-fiction. They publish like Lola Olufemi's experiments in imagining otherwise that kind of thing but yeah this is a novel and um, it's about well again I am gonna just be annoying and read the blurbs I'm sorry if I wasn't so like scattered after being in loads of pain so much recently I would maybe be more interesting here sorry okay so this is 20 years after she first chanted in Tahrir Hanan's son is living under military rule in Egypt Though he is both a disciple of the National Sufi Institute and a swimmer representing the armed forces, proximity to power cannot undo his revolutionary birthright. Like his mother and grandmother before him, Shahid is an undercover rebel. And there's more, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like this thematic kind of like mother-son um, interesting political rebelliousness is coming through from that. Also, the author, his like uh, bio, uh, yeah, it says Mohamed Tonzi is a queer Egyptian writer and ceramicist. So love ceramicists love clay anyway yeah but i just think this looks really interesting so i'll be really um looking forward to reading that i think i said this in like um, a previous video but like you know i've been wanting to read the books kind of intentionally um and continuously that i brought back from america because obviously like i brought them back here so i should definitely get to them so i've been like you know trying to pick ones to keep on various TBRs or just like to read one per month kind of thing and obviously like it's three months of summer so hopefully I'll read more than this but I want to, to just pick one for this so the one I picked for that is Sky Papers by Jamika Agilon which just seems really cool uh I think Sage whose channel's name I can't remember at this point recommended it me uh in response to um My Love of Lote by Shola von Reinhold um so I'll be really interested to see the kind of connections potentially between these two about a person called Sky who flits between cities and stagnant relationships uh, until she meets Scotty a disarming and disheveled British traveller and pieces an enigmatic artist living in New York yeah black punk whimsical revolutionary they live a glorious subterranean existence in 1990s London so yeah I think it's about art and counterculture and black punks all stuff i'm very interested in and super down for so i'm looking forward to it also yeah i'm looking for punk books like uh i said in a video um where i asked for like recommendations um because i'm like int intrigued by what that kind of means and like what punkness in like literary form can be like um so maybe this will be something i consider as part of that and then the last one is a book that i got recently and it's also another quite big one actually <laughs> um, and it is also actually an Italian uh, novel I'm clearly I'm having an Italian year I think at the moment although it's actually mostly just Ginsberg let's be real but uh, this is um, Lies and Sorcery by Elsa Morante translated by Jenny McPhee um, which is I think like a sweeping kind of familial tale focusing on is it three oh, okay well I thought that there were specifically three kind of like levels to the story but now I'm not sure well anyway it's set in Sicily and is like narrated by um, Elisa an orphaned young woman uh, who's being raised um, by a fallen woman I think it just passes through time I'm just really looking forward to it and I know that I've done a terrible job at describing basically all of these books um, <laughs> but I'm sorry hopefully I'll be able to tell you in more depth when I've read them I think that's everything I wanted to say uh, let me know if you've read any of these um, <laughs> or what your summer reading plans are and yeah I hope you're doing okay um, I'm gonna leave a link to um, a GoFundMe in my description box uh, that my friend is organizing yeah please donate if you can yeah, there'll be more information about it in the description box and I will talk to you when I next talk to you bye